so we are starting now today is a 206th friday group meeting the topic is levy of administrative charges by the state where do they fit into into our constitutional scheme uh, speaker is our beloved uh, mukherji ji uh, so uh, abhinav mukherji senior advocate recently elevated and uh, is doing very well uh, i uh, mahima bharadwaj she is going to read uh, uh, uh mukherjee's uh, cv that's what i mean uh, this thing mahima you take over this and uh, kindly read them and sirs namaskar of everyone so uh, we would like to thank you abhinav mukherjee sir who is a first generation advocate and recently elevated uh, and confirmed the privilege of designation as a senior advocate by supreme court of india he is a gold medalist in the aor examination by the supreme court of india and also served as a standard counsel for the state of bihar and additional advocate general <coughs> for the state of himachal pradesh in the supreme court and is currently serving as a additional advocate general for the state of bihar he has worked extensively in the field of anti doping law narcotics constitutional civil criminal and, and commercial laws his initial training was in the chamber of mr maninder singh senior counsel and mr mrs pratibha m singh now a judge of the delhi high court and late mr arun jetli senior advocate and former cabinet minister a prolific uh, writer his articles have been published in legal blogs newspapers and digital channels and has been called upon to appear in television debates by reputed reputed news channels such as republic tv and cnn network 18 he is also the vice chairman of the anti doping appeal panel and is the apex appellant authority to hear and educate disputes in relation to the field of doping control in sport in india so thank you sir for uh, coming here yeah thank you for having me so thank you maima so nice of you thank you everybody for having me here today <coughs> it's an honor and a privilege uh, that i get to be here and interact with all of you and i must thank you for all your efforts that you have taken upon yourselves the onus of organizing this kind of a discussion group and an academic uh, resource which young lawyers really benefit from and uh, i hope to be able to Uh, ensure that all of you spend your time meaningfully today rather than you know listen to somebody who has a captive audience to talk to so uh, today's topic is the usual topic of an administrative charge and where it will trace its source of levy to now in the constitutional scheme which we have today under article 265 which deals with the taxation power of the state essentially the court has held repeatedly that no tax can be levied without a specific entry being there and the power to levy should be very clear and a law in place now when you look at this concept this has been laid down right from hearst pharmaceuticals onwards and the court has also taken the view that if there is a general entry you cannot trace the power to tax there this has also been reiterated in kesuram industries onwards when we look at the source which has been already delineated the court's judgments lay out a distinction between general entries and taxation entries the power to deduce a tax is not there from a general entry it has to be always linked to a very very specific entry there is no overlapping the tax sources be clearly demarcated now to go into this topic further we must understand first what is the remit of an administrative fee or a charge and what is the remit of a tax what are the differentiation amongst them so 
for broadly we can say that as far as the tax is concerned it is a compulsory exaction it is done for a public purpose you have no say in paying it whereas for a fee it is a voluntary aspect and it is not levied uniformly on everybody it is basically for the user of the services that is one of the fundamental uh, differences between an administrative charge and a tax the other aspect is that a fee is payable for a reciprocal obligation whereas a tax there is no reciprocal obligation so you will have a fee only when somebody is giving you a service or somebody is uh, uh, what do you call it regulating an an aspect of industry where you are based whereas tax again is uniform no regu- uh, reciprocal aspect it the last aspect which we need to think of is that a tax is always based on the capacity to pay there is a rate fixed and the rate is usually fixed when there is a capacity you have reached to pay so whether it is income tax sales tax excise tax etc all rates depending on whatever aspect like your income your profitability etc whereas fee is not that fee is or a administrative charge other sorry is a uniform charge it doesn't relate to your capacity to pay this is how we understand an administrative charge and a tax now in the constitutional scheme there is also a difference between a tax and this regulatory fee or and the fee can be of two types one is a regulatory fee without any quid pro quo that means you simply have to pay as a user there is no service being given the state is regulating an aspect of industry so it could be for instance regulating let's say sale and purchase of molasses to ensure that it is not diverted for use to make alcohol for consumption so the industry will pay it but there could be an aspect of quid pro quo in certain uh, situations where this kind of charge is levied so there the court looks at what the quid pro quo is whether you have actually given the service for which you have charged that administrative fee one common thread which the supreme court has said is that for an administrative charge to be classified as such it should not be excessive it can't be a source of revenue and if it is excessive it sometimes partakes the nature of a tax and becomes something where you generate revenue from and therefore it is then held very often to be a tax the other aspect which the court has opined on is that an administrative charge now when the government levies it there is no quantifiable data available that how will i levy this how will i recover my cost of giving this particular service to the public at large so the court has said that those circumstances you need to prove that it is a mathematical accuracy that this is your cost of rendering the service and this is what you are recovering to meet that cost so it doesn't have to be a mathematical accuracy it could be a rough estimate and that is also been dealt with by many many judgments of the court and a very important aspect is that very often a fee or an administrative charge in the nature of a fee is not only levied upon the person who is availing that service it is levied across the board and similarly the service also is not only restricted to the contributories who have paid that particular charge it could be across the board so the court has said that the entire industry may be paying it but maybe very few indus in that particular complex or unit are using that service but it has still been accepted as an administrative charge now what is the concept of a fee has been explained very well in many many judgments of the court what is the concept of a tax has also been so explained but the kind of administrative charges which can be levied 
have not really been dealt with in great detail and clarity by the court so far. So we are all aware that tax is like a compulsory exaction from a public authority for a public purpose. It is not for specific services rendered. Similarly, fee is again charged specifically for particular services, etc. But again, this discussion of the court has so far lacked upon what is an administrative charge, what are the nature of administrative charges being charged, what are the entries to which it is related. Now, one of the earliest cases which came up in relation to the source of power to levy an administrative charge is the case of synthetics and chemicals. Now, in synthetics and chemicals, the issue was in relation to molasses. And the argument was that molasses could, though for industrial use, could be diverted to make liquor for human consumption. The state's argument was that in the general entry of regulating intoxicating liquors, I am entitled to levy an administrative charge. The converse argument was that, look, it is actually not possible to levy this kind of a charge without there being a specific entry. It is in the nature of a tax. So there was a lot of discussion in the judgment about police powers of the state, sovereign right of the state. Ultimately, the court, in a couple of paragraphs, without going into this aspect in great detail, took the view that the state's contention is correct. It could relate to that particular entry in relation to uh, uh, regulation of alcohol and intoxicating liquors. But the court put a caveat saying that it should not be used as a source of generating revenue. So in principle, the court agreed that for an administrative charge to be sustained, it could be under any entry provided the charge is ancillary and in continuation of the uh, main object of the uh, act or enactment which was there, that it is to regulate that particular activity. It need not then be available under a specific other entry like taxation is there. So that distinction has been drawn by the court. Now, the judgment of the Supreme Court in synthetics has been followed by many other ju subsequent judgments of the court. And uh, another test which has been added while following it to determine whether it's an administrative charge or a tax is where, what is the primary object of the levy. Now, is the primary object of the levy to actually just recover the cost which the state as an entity has incurred for the services it has provided of regulation, etc. Or is it to act as a fiscal source and raise revenue for the state. So if it is going to be ending up as a fiscal source, that is where the state is trying to generate revenue far in excess of what it is spending to regulate that particular activity, then the court has classified it as a tax. But if it is actually the regulating, let's say, horse racing or molasses, which we gave, talked about, or paper industry, etc., the court has gone on to say that, look, the main power of regulating, let's say for instance, horse raising is ensure the quality of the horses are there, ensure that whoever is a particular horse rider, he functions within certain rules, animals are taken care of, how the uh, entire, uh, entire thing is being run. So you levy some charge on it, it is then held that this is actually an administrative charge. It is not in the nature of a tax as such and it is only in the exercise of making sure that the cost which the state has incurred is recovered by it. Because ultimately every activity of the state, we all know, has a cost element to it. So this was the view which the uh, court took in fact in the Delhi race uh, uh, club's uh, view, uh, case. Now, one uh, aspect is that very often when the court deals with these matters, it has gone on to study these different industries in great detail 
to arrive at a consensus on whether this is actually only an administrative charge or whether this is a taxation under the guise of an administrative charge. That is a very interesting aspect because there uh, we see that the role of the lawyer to make the court understand the business as such which, which is uh, under consideration becomes very important. Now in the constitution, we also find this distinction between a tax and a fee. But as far as administrative charge is there, the constitution is silent on it. So we all know that under Article 366, Clause 28, tax has been defined. It's a well-known definition. The constitution also, when it talks about money bills, it uses different terminology in Articles 110, 2 and 199, where it talks about tax and fee. But as far as the, this particular administrative charge is there, it is completely silent. So we have entries which deal with tax, we have constitutional provisions which talk about fee, but we don't have any constitutional provision which talks about administrative charge. Now, when we talk about an administrative charge, we also have to see the connection between the activity regulated and the charge. So what is the extent of the activity and what is the extent of the charge? This is also a great indicator of whether it is only to generate revenue or whether it is actually just to recover the cost. Now, when we see the judgment of the court in synthetic which has been followed subsequently in a series of decisions, whether it is AP paper mills or any race club, etc. All have gone on this aspect that you look at it from the perspective of the main entry where the enactment is coming from, it's an ancillary part. Now this was the very clear position until one judgment of the Supreme Court in Chahata Sugar, which is a 2004 decision of the court. Now, in Chata Sugar, it's a three-judge bench decision. Justice Kapadias is the lead, <coughs> Justice Sina has a concurring judge. A very uh, the question arose in relation to again molasses. For some reason, this is all related to liquor. I don't know why. Now, in this molasses case, the UP Act was there, which levied this particular administrative charge on the purchaser of the molasses, and the purchaser was passing it on to the subsequent buyer etc. Now the state of UP to justify this again said the same thing which was said in synthetics that look this is an item which is raw material for liquor it could be diverted even though it's for industrial use it could be diverted to uh, you know making liquor fit for human consumption. So the court considered a couple of things in this. First the court considered is that the levy of this particular charge was on the production and sale of the molasses. That's one thing it considered. Second thing it considered is, yes, the state had a right to regulate it. The third thing is considered is that who receives the benefit of the services. Now, in this case, the, the fee was being passed on to the consumer is noted by the court. And based on this, the court opines without any particular discussion except on this aspect that it is being passed on to the consumer that this is actually an attribute of tax. Now naturally if somebody pays administrative charges, he is entitled to pass it on to the consumer of a product. But for some reason the court in this case felt that though it was styled as an administrative charge for regulating molasses, it is actually a tax. And there is a stray line in the judgment which says this. After holding this, that it is a kind of a tax, the court then went on to compare it with excise duty, which is levied on manufacture and sale of products, and said that it is like an indirect tax. And the tests which apply to excise duty, etc., are also applicable to the present case. That is the second line of this is, uh, uh, reasoning which comes out from the reading of the journal. And the third Strangely, though there was no data before it, the court said that it is actually to maximize revenue. 
that this kind of charge is being levied. So now the administrative charge, which which was a normal charge which states were levying on in relation to this kind of an industry, the, was held to be a nature of a tax. And the also one other aspect which was considered by the court was the principle of quid pro quo and said there was it was also being clearly attracted in these kind of facts. Now having said this the, and having held this to be a tax, the confusion will now arise that then how will you classify an administrative charge because in every case administrative charge will be levied on and uh, for uh, this kind of activity it will sometimes have an element of quid pro quo sometimes not it will or it is entitled to be passed on to a uh, user or a purchaser subsequently this is where the confusion has arisen now on classification of an administrative charge this judgment according to me will result in a plethora of litigation now on classification of administrative charge because this is actually not considered any of the previous examples and the reasoning and the tests which the court has laid down from time to time and suddenly arrived at this kind of uh, uh, finding. The one aspect which when you go through this judgment you will see is that once it is held to be a tax the court has not considered where this UP Act has come from, where you will put this administrative charge which is now held to be a tax, which entry it is to be traced from, because there is no clear entry in the entire constitutional scheme of how you can levy this charge. So that judgment is now silent on this aspect. Now this judgment will lead to another aspect that the moment you say it's a tax, where is, where is it that I will classify any other administrative charge? So this is actually now going to open a Pandora's box and matters like this have already started coming up, they are pending in the court where states have now to sustain their administrative charge which has been held to be a tax in Charta Shubha. The other aspect now is that synthetics as a whole now has been referred to the constitution which is now ongoing and those of you who are interested must attend those proceedings. There are about 7-8 questions framed there. Very interestingly when you look at the questions, you will find out that though the court has consistently taken the view that there is no overlap of taxation entries between the parliament and the assemblies of states, that is between list 1 and list 2, the reference questions seem to suggest that the court is proceeding on the premise that there will be some overlap. So it will be interesting to see whether this aspect is considered in that judgment about whether there can be any overlap of taxation entries in list 1 with the power of the state to legislate on tax in list 2. I am hoping that somebody will raise this issue on administrative charges being held to be a tax in that reference and we will get some clarity on that also because synthetics is the bedrock of the view that it is not to be related to any taxation power. It is actually simply an administrative charge. So this is how the things are as far as administrative charge and the constitutional scheme. And uh, <coughs> I would welcome any thoughts on what we have discussed. The purpose of the uh, uh, talk today was to give you some ideas which I have looked at these particular judgments in a particular way. Perhaps all of you have also been able to uh, you know, look at them and have some thoughts on it and I would welcome some uh, questions or discussions on this aspect. Thank you very much, Abhinavji. Very nicely explained. We are really uh, at least I am very poor in this area. No, no, no. Yeah, you have given an excellent analysis and administrative side and constitutional and so, uh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very, very much. Uh, friends, My any pleasure. questions? Please, any questions? Yeah, we can go for questions. Sir? Yeah, please. For constitution, this is the section. So, 
so like I said that the view of synthetics was that it will relate to the enactment uh, entry. So if, if it is uh, enactment, let's say dealing with uh, regulation of uh, textile industry and the state comes out with an enactment to regulate textiles etc and it seeks to recover some kind of charge for that uh, regulation then the end, the charge will be traced back to that particular entry itself not a taxation entry it could be any general entry that is the fundamental distinction between the taxation entry and this kind of an administrative charge entry because in contrast taxation all revenue they are guaranteed by the constitution that's right they are, they are traced to a specific entry a specific in the constitution entry in the yes so in this it is not so in this it is held that it will be any other entry except any taxation entry a specific body will only charge administrative charges they will that, only that will depend on the authority which is overseeing that particular enactment so it could be any other department of the government which is overseeing that it could be the municipal authorities, it could be the... Uh, yeah, it could be anybody any, any whoever was empowered under the act to regulate that particular aspect. Yeah. Any questions further? Question? Yeah. Put. Uh, now uh, I... Uh, Kavya, I request you to give a vote of her. Thanks. Please come forward. Yes, please. So, please. So indeed a wonderful session I must say by Mr. Mukherjee, thank you very much sir for kindly sparing your precious time and being here with us and indeed making this you know noon lovely and on behalf of the entire Friday group I advocate Kavya Bhuti Raja extend a heartfelt gratitude to you sir once thank again. Thank you very much for having me. This was indeed a wonderful and an informative <coughs> session you know different facets of administrative charges discussed beautifully and dealt with by sir. And last but never the least, I extend a heartfelt gratitude to all of you for kindly joining us here. And we definitely would like to invite sir for other sessions as well. 100%. As it was. Always there. Thank you very much sir. Always there for all of you and for sir. Thank you Wonderful. So much. Can we please have a huge round of applause for sir? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You all make me feel like a mini celebrity which I am not. <laughs> That's a humility sir. Thank you. Friends, kindly join.